Hello, hello, and welcome. We are so excited to have you here. I can see y'all pouring in right now, so just come on in. We are getting super excited, and welcome to the College Admissions Collaborative Highlighting Engineering and Technology Virtual College Fair. My name is Jay, and I'm going to be your facilitator for this evening with StriveScan, but we have six great schools that are here to really give you just some quick hits with six minutes on what they can offer you. So we definitely hope you are here to learn about these schools and ask some great questions. Um, just some housekeeping items before we get started. You can use the Q&A button at the bottom or top of your screen at any time to go ahead and ask our panelists questions. Now, we do ask that when you're doing that, if they're for a specific school, let's go ahead and just ask that specific school and state that in the question to make sure they know who to answer. Also, your camera and your audio are completely off. You can see and hear us, but we cannot see and hear you. Also, this is just one of many different sessions. So after you get the six minutes quick, the six minute quick hit from these schools, tomorrow and over the next couple of days, they have full information sessions that are happening over in other sessions. Also, this will be recorded. So within about one week, you'll be able to go ahead here and follow up if you've missed something or need to follow back up with it. I'm going to go ahead and stop talking now and bring up our first presenter here. We've got Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University first. Go ahead and take it away. Hi, everyone. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here and to tell you all more about Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. Just before we get started, I want to tell you a little bit about us. Um, when you see Embry-Riddle, you will see Florida, Arizona worldwide, and that is because we actually have three campuses. While the university was founded in 1926, we have grown exponentially and have been able to take over the world literally when it comes to uh, opportunities regarding aeronautics, our aeronautics and aerospace. So our Florida campus is the most known of our campuses. It's in Daytona Beach, Florida. It is the largest of our two residential campuses with about 7,000 students. We are right in the heart of Daytona Beach and adjacent to the Daytona Beach International Airport. For students that are interested in things like aerospace engineering or mechanical engineering, um, electrical engineering software, we've got it all. Uh, students have been able to work with Disney and the Imagineering program, um, but also going over to the Kennedy Space Center and co-op um, or having internships with even NASA. Um, the Daytona Beach campus is um, about five miles away from the beach um, and it is um, right in the picturesque downtown area. The Prescott, Arizona campus is the smaller of the two residential campuses with about 3,000 students. Um, Prescott actually was once named the cleanest air in America. So we do like to say it's a breath of fresh air to go to Prescott. The students at the Prescott campus have been able to have some really great experiences because they are about two hours south or north of Phoenix and four hours south of the Grand Canyon. And so within that, um, the students, especially those in the flight program, have been able to have a lot of great flying weather. Students uh, within the aerospace engineering program actually created the university's um, first hot fire engine facility. And it is uh, the Prescott campus actually has the number one aerospace engineering program in the country. Our worldwide campus is our online campus for students who are looking to stay at home um, or who go into the military. Worldwide is a great option to do engineering programs or even a degree in aeronautics. As far as tangible experiences here at the university, we do like to highlight that even though the Daytona Beach campus has about 7,000 students and our Prescott campus has about 3,000, we do keep our classes really small. For students within the College of Engineering, the College of Aviation, the College of Business, we really keep our classes no more than about 35 students with an average class size of 27 and 24. There are some classes where it's just one-on-one -on -one or four-on-one, 10-on-one, and that keeps it pretty exciting. Students are doing some real hands-on things here, which is why a group of four students was able to create a hot fire engine over at the Prescott campus. Our placement rate is a testament to the great things that our students have been able to do while they're students and how that translates into their future. So 94% of our students within a year of graduation have gotten a job or are continuing education in their field. 
We have tons of clubs and organizations for our on-campus students, over 350 for our on-campus. Um, the most popular at the Daytona Beach campus being skydiving, because why wouldn't we have both planes on campus and let you jump out of the planes? Um, Prescott, they do have hang gliding. For students that are interested in doing things that are just a little bit more fun, we do have opportunities for students to be in the acapellas, the acapellas, um, to be in um, different choir opportunities. So lots of different ways to kind of enrich your um, on-campus life. For a wider world view for athletics, we're NCAA Division II in Daytona and NAIA Division II in Prescott. And basically we have everything but football and wrestling in Daytona, but we do have wrestling in Prescott. Instead of a football team, we do have a competitive flight team that has actually been inducted into the National Air and Space um, Society. For study abroad opportunities, there are a plenty for students to do, whether it's in their degree program or for culture. Um, my favorite is OWA engineering, where students can study engineering in a Spanish speaking country, typically Spain. We have every branch of ROTC at the Daytona Beach campus and Army and Air Force at Prescott and about 13 Greek life opportunities for students on campus. Here are some of our notable programs, aeronautical science being our flight program, aerospace engineering, astronomy and astrophysics is huge at the Daytona Beach campus. And we actually have the only research-based telescope, the largest research-based telescope um, on a college campus in the state of Florida. Forensics is also huge and aerospace physiology is our pre-med program here at the university. And this is just a quick glimpse of all of our bachelor degree programs. And so really quickly, I'm just gonna talk about our application process. It's pretty easy. You go to erau.edu slash apply to submit your application. You use code DBPC to waive that. You'll only apply to one campus. So please choose either Florida, Arizona, or worldwide, and then you'll submit your transcripts. We are a test optional university and have been for over five years. So you can submit your SAT and ACT scores if you'd like, it's a yes or no question on the application. Submit two letters of recommendation, an essay and a resume to really round out that application and let us learn a little bit more about you. And that's basically it. If you'd like to contact us, here's our contact information. I'll put it in the chat. But like I said, my name is Ludine Lewis and you can reach out to me as well. Awesome, thank you so much, Ludine. We're gonna move right along over to Florida Tech. Mike, take it away. Absolutely. Hey, folks, how are you doing this evening? My name is Mike Perry. I'm the Executive Director of Admissions here at Florida Institute of Technology. Welcome to the College Fair tonight. Uh, some quick facts about this university. Uh, we are located in East Central Florida, about halfway down the state of Florida, right on the East Coast, just south of the Kennedy Space Center. We were actually founded by a bunch of NASA scientists and engineers uh, back when they were establishing what's now Cape Canaveral and the Kennedy Space Center in the late 50s and so forth. So we've grown tremendously uh, since that time over the last 62 years. Uh, our students come from all 50 states and over 110 countries around the world. Uh, we have on-campus undergraduate and graduate programs. Uh, we have about 3,500 undergraduate students and about 2,000 graduate level students. Uh, what's not on here is our 13 off-campus graduate sites that do master's and doctoral programs. And then we have a Florida Tech Online division uh, that hosts about 2,300 online students in non-STEM type majors. But great uh, place to live and learn. Uh, we're surrounded by all the big companies that support NASA uh, and the Space Center, uh, divisions of Lockheed Martin and Northrop Grumman and L3 Harris and Boeing and GE. Uh, SpaceX is just north of us. Uh, and we have a, we enjoy a very good relationship with the Space Center and all those companies that uh, support them. Uh, our university is divided into four colleges, uh, College of Aeronautics, a College of Business, a College of Engineering and Science, and a College of Psychology and Liberal Arts. Uh, by far our largest is the College of Engineering and Science. Uh, we have about 75% of our students enrolled uh, within that college, uh, all STEM majors. Uh, we're considered a tier one uh, National Doctoral Granting Research University. So that puts us in the upper tier of colleges and universities in the United States. Uh, we've been rated as among the top 200 colleges and universities in the world by Times Higher Education. And we also enjoy a very good placement rate, uh, mainly because of the type of degree programs that we confer. Uh, we have a 95% placement rate where students are either employed in their field of study or in graduate school at the time of graduation or within the first six months of graduating. Um, pretty well known to have a very robust cooperative education and internship programs. Uh, most of our engineering students will, will opt to do cooperative education. Uh, that's experiential learning where you'll go work for a company in your field of study. 
uh, and it's a paid position. Uh, and they'll typically do multiple semesters. So it's kind of like going to school year round and alternating a semester of, of uh, full-time work in your field of study with a, a semester of full-time uh, academics. Uh, some of our aviation, our business, or, or our psychology and liberal arts um, uh, majors will opt to do a one semester internship, which may or may not be paid. Another thing that our students get to enjoy or take advantage of is fast tracking, fast tracking into graduate programs. Uh, because we do bachelor's, master's, and doctoral level degrees, uh, the average time to graduation is four years for a bachelor's degree. It's typically two years for a master's, and then when you get up to the PhD level, it's two plus, depending on, on what type of research you're doing. Uh, but if you're a good student, if you have a 3.3 cumulative grade point average at the end of your junior year, the university allows you to take graduate level courses your fourth year that count for both your undergraduate degree and your graduate degree. So by the time you finish four years, you only have one more academic year uh, to get a master's. So fast tracking is completing a bachelor's degree and a master's degree in five years as opposed to six plus years. Uh, you can't get out of this university uh, with a degree without either doing undergraduate research or participating in engineering design projects, uh, very much hands-on. Uh, it's if you're in a science type major, you're directed uh, uh, to do um, scientific research at the undergraduate level. Uh, more often than not, it's funded research. Uh, if you're in engineering, uh, you'll work in teams of engineering students or engineering and science students, different disciplines, and you go from a concept to a design uh, to actually building things. Uh, it's amazing. They build robots here. We certainly build airplanes and rockets. We build uh, Formula One uh, uh, cars, we build jet dragsters, uh, creepy crawly things that go out into the ocean, uh, all sorts of neat stuff. Um, our research and design is funded by Northrop Grumman. Uh, we have a, a research and design center for undergraduate students on campus. We also have our own machine uh, shop where uh, you can actually build parts and then assemble them in the research and design center. Uh, so they do some amazing things. They hold an annual uh, presentation in spring semester every year uh, for the senior design projects uh, and it's it's attended by NASA and, and all those large corporations that I mentioned. A lot of students get job offers on the spot uh, or opportunities uh, uh, to go into graduate school. If you like doing that type of stuff though you can start as early as your freshman year as soon as you get here. Well, we're going to be a little different uh, than a lot of schools and, and uh, similar to, to a lot of my colleagues here is we're a direct admit type university. So if you tell us you wanna be an aerospace engineer uh, and we admit you into aerospace engineering, uh, you start studying aerospace engineering as a freshman and you're gonna study it all four years. Uh, what we would consider general education is a lot different than, than other institutions. Uh, you'll start out in some heavy math and sciences, but also the engineering courses and you'll study it all four years uh, and so forth. Um, we have great financial aid at the university here. Uh, over 98% of our students uh, receive some type of financial aid. We do scholarships and grants uh, through Florida Tech. We participate in all the Florida State financial aid programs and then all the federal forms of financial aid. And then we have a lot of funded uh, grants and so forth. So thank you very much um, uh, for listening to us today. Uh, check us out on uh, Amazon Prime. We have a show, it's called The College Tour. We're episode number two. So thanks for being with us tonight, folks. Thank you so much, Florida Tech. Great to have you here. We're gonna move right along to Georgia Tech. Come on up. Thanks, Jay. And hello, everybody. My name is Sarah. And as Jay mentioned, um, we are gonna talk a little bit now about Georgia Tech. So hang on while I get my screen share. All right, um, so I want to spend just a few minutes and give you a really quick overview of the big picture items that you need to know or big picture kind of features of what you really need to know about Georgia Tech. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about who we are and also a little bit about who we're not because that's really important as well, right? Um, Georgia Tech was founded in 1885. Um, as really a way to uh, create the next. It was a very uncertain time coming in at the tail end of the Industrial Revolution. Georgia Tech sits in the center of Midtown Atlanta. Um, and the city of Atlanta and Georgia Tech really grew up with each other and have a very close relationship. 
Uh, that has translated into uh, creating the next and influencing um, progress and service on a global scale rather than just a citywide scale today. Um, fast forward to where we are now, again, sitting in a very uncertain time and our student body as well as our faculty and staff have certainly been part of um, creating solutions in, in our Atlanta community, but also our, our global community as well. At the very core of who we are, our motto is progress and service. Very simple, very straightforward, easy, not Latin or complicated, progress and service. And we don't just mean progress for the sake of progress or service as in completing community service. Both of those things are great and noble causes, but we talk about progress and service a little bit more from that macro level. And what we mean by that is Georgia Tech is a great place to come and learn so that you can come and do and create and solve problems. Really creating solutions is at the core of your education at Georgia Tech. We are a school of about 16,000 undergraduate students. So we are a mid to large research public institution, uh, again, in the city of Atlanta. And we are somewhat of an anomaly because though we're an institution of about 16,000 undergraduate students, we only offer 36 academic majors across our six colleges at Georgia Tech. We are not all things to all people and we are a very highly focused academic experience. So even if you're studying something like public policy in our College of Liberal Arts, you're actually studying that through the lens of science, technology, industry, and research, um, and how those things ought to inform policy as we create it. So any degree that a student receives from Georgia Tech is a Bachelor of Science degree. It's the only undergraduate degree that we offer. I also mentioned, um, kind of that we are, are very interested in helping students learn so that they can do. At Georgia Tech, we are not a great place for people who love to learn for the sake of learning. That is a very noble cause and there are many really wonderful institutions for that cause. Um, but at Georgia Tech, we're a really good fit um, for students who love to learn so that they can turn that knowledge into something. And often at Georgia Tech, that is a physical product. Um, we are very interested in providing you with applied learning experiences through co-ops and internships, through research opportunities, through getting engaged in our maker spaces and labs on campus, um, through study abroad programs, um, where we do have specific programs that allow students who aren't always able to study abroad, um, those who study, for instance, engineering, um, might not always have that, that opportunity or, or access, and, and we hope to facilitate that for you. I would also be remiss not to tell you how our existence in the city of Atlanta really facilitates um, a, an interesting college experience. We are, again, a bit of an anomaly in that we are located in the very center of the economic capital of the southeastern United States, a major, major city. But when you're on our campus, you don't always feel like you're in the middle of a major city. Now, I love about Georgia Tech that we are a very true quintessential college campus community that just happens to be in the middle of a major city, which means that you have really good access to great resources like major Fortune 500 company headquarters to intern or co-op with, a really incredible startup scene and industry in the city and on our campus as well. Um, but then also more fun access to things like professional sporting events when gasp, we are allowed back in arenas with crowds of people um, and concerts, um, parks and great cuisine and restaurants and just fun things to do in the city as well. Additionally, no matter where you're coming from, we're home to the world's busiest airport when, again, gas, you can get on an airplane again and travel pretty easily. Um, it, it's, it's easy access to the city of Atlanta as well. Um, we will place our email address and contact information in the chat um, and hope to, to see you or speak with you and engage with you a little bit more as you're going through this search process. The QR code on your screen as well is a, a copy of our viewbook to learn more about us. Thanks.
Beautiful, thank you so much, Sarah. Now, it looks like we are halfway through our evening, so we're gonna move right along over to Drexel University. Kevin, go on ahead. Hi friends, good evening, happy Monday. I hope everybody's well. My name is Kevin, I am here from Drexel University and I have a little presentation for you. I also just shared some information in the chat box for everybody if anybody wants some supplemental light reading to go along with my presentation. Our admissions view book is there for you through the publications link uh, and some more opportunities to hang out with us virtually if you'd like. Drexel University is a comprehensive research university located here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, uh, where good things always happen. Uh, we're located in a neighborhood called University City, which we share with our friends at the University of Pennsylvania and the University of the Sciences. So we're in a really unique situation, kind of like our friends down at Georgia Tech down south where we are in a neighborhood that is really committed to the college student experience with over 30,000 college students in a 30 square block radius, uh, but located right in the middle of the sixth largest city in the United States. So it's a really unique place to come and explore your college life. Uh, I went to Drexel, graduated in 2015 from our School of Business, so happy to also talk from the alumni perspective. Here is that classic college admissions presentation slide where you get some general statistics about the university. Uh, Drexel's home to 14,000 uh, to 15,000 undergraduate students, uh, and they come to Drexel from over 45 states and 120 different countries all over the world. We split those students up into 80 undergraduate majors in 13 different colleges and academic units, uh, and I'll talk about those in just a second. I think the most important stats on this screen, however, are our student to faculty ratio of just 11 to 1 and our median class size of just 19 students. Drexel's a big place. Uh, there's about 30,000 total dragons when you take, a, take into consideration our undergraduate students, our graduate students and our faculty and staff. But despite that, we really focus on the small classroom environs, environments because we know that's how students learn best. Here are our 13 colleges and academic units, uh, and they are complemented by a school of law and a college of medicine. Uh, Drexel has been well known for a long time for people who knew what they wanted to do. If you knew you wanted to be an engineer, you knew you wanted to work in finance, you knew you wanted to be a nurse, Drexel could be a really good fit for you. We've not always been a great place for people who didn't know what they wanted to do. That changed a couple of years ago with the establishment of our first year exploratory studies program housed in our Goodman College of Professional Studies. Basically, it gives you the option to come in and explore three different academic programs in your first year and then move into your full program starting in your sophomore year and matriculate and graduate at the same rate as the rest of the student body. Uh, sorry, my computer is telling me I've been online for too long and flashing lights at me. <laughs> uh, we also have tons of different combined and accelerated degree options, um, ranging from uh, a BSMS in engineering or in biomedical engineering to a BSMBA in uh, fashion and design merchandising to our four plus four early assurance program into our medical school. I'm happy to answer any specific questions on that. Uh, like some of my friends here, Drexel does this thing called a co-op, which is a full-time work experience while you're in school. It's basically the idea that your in-classroom learning needs to cooperate with your out-of-classroom professional development. Uh, Drexel's been doing it now for 101 years. It's been a piece of our educational model for longer than athletics, for longer than most of our clubs and organizations. Uh, it is a big piece of the Drexel experience with almost 95% of our student body doing at least one co-op and about 60% of our student bodily body doing three co-ops totaling 18 months of full-time work experience. It's a major piece of the Drexel undergraduate experience. This is just a couple of examples of folks, uh, of places where folks work, uh, and they do work all across uh, the United States and all across the world with co-ops in, uh, the, in 2019, we had co-ops in 43 different countries uh, and 25 different states all across the U.S. So there's opportunities to work both here in the Philadelphia region and also all across the world. And like I mentioned, those are six-month full-time work experience opportunities for our students. Our largest employer is Comcast. They are located 10 blocks from our campus, pretty natural head, uh, hiring uh, partners for us there. But Drexel has 1,500 employers and over 8,000 jobs posted on our unique job portal every single year for our students uh, and a 98.7% employment rate in our co-op program um, during a normal year, non-pandemic non related. Uh, we also have a 95% job employment rate uh, for our students six months post-graduation, um, something that we're really proud of. Uh, we also do something a little bit different than many other places. We are on the quarter system here at the university. So we split our academic year into four academic terms named after the seasons. Uh, this allows us to do a couple of things. First, it gets our students in and out of classes much quicker. Uh, you only have class for 10 weeks. So if there's a class you really don't like, because there will be classes in college you don't like, just like there are classes in high school that you don't like, uh, you'll be able to get out of that classroom faster. It also allows you to take just more academic coursework. You have 12 academic terms in your degree at Drexel versus eight at a typical semester university, giving you much more flexibility 
flexibility. But most importantly, it gives us the opportunity to include those six month co-op opportunities built into and baked into your academic program, rather than asking you to take time off of the academic classroom um, or, uh, or give up academic credits in order to have those experiences. Uh, Drexel is a large college campus. It is a contiguous campus, meaning from start to finish. Our campus is all Drexel buildings, uh, so you know that you're on our campus when you're here, um, and there's tons of things to do while you're here from Division I athletics uh, to exploring one of the best food truck scenes in the country uh, to living in a residential hall, uh, which we have 11 of, including tons of different living and learning communities for students as well. Uh, here's just some some facts. We're approaching 400 clubs and student organizations. I keep uh, begging our friends and student activities to give me an updated number over 400 because I think that would look pretty nice. Uh, and we have tons of other ways for you to explore life as, as a member of our community of dragons here. Uh, over 30 fraternities and sororities ranging from those classic social fraternities and sororities to service professional and cultural fraternities and sororities um, and tons of ways to stay involved athletically, whether that's through Division One athletics where we have 18 different teams, including proudly, uh, we just had three teams in NCAA competition competition, including both our basketball teams for the first time in over 25 years, which we're very proud of, um, and tons of ways to be involved with music as well, if that's something that you're passionate about. Drexel's asked for all the same stuff as everybody else, pretty much. I know I got to wrap up here in a second. I'm happy to answer any further questions on our application process. The one important thing I'll highlight here is Drexel is test optional for the next two full academic uh, admission cycles. Uh, so no need to send test scores. We are fully test optional. You can be considered for everything with or without test scores. But thank you everybody for hanging out. I'll, I'll be in the Q&A box answering all your questions. Jay. Awesome. Thanks so much, Kevin. Really appreciate that there. We are now going to move along to Bucknell University. Come on up. Outstanding. My name is Ben Cavanaugh. I am an Associate Director of Admissions. I'm in my 15th year at Bucknell. So everything I'm going to say, I'm completely biased. So take it with a grain of salt. Uh, in the chat, uh, I'm not going to give you any pictures. I think I'm captivating, but I'm going to link a couple of our websites, one for the College of Engineering, one for the College of Arts and Sciences. I've also put my email address in case you want to contact me later. Uh, we are uh, as you can see behind me, uh, it's always sunny at Bucknell. We're located in beautiful, bucolic Lewisburg, Pennsylvania, which is right in the central part of the state. Been around since 1846. Uh, we're about 3,500 students. So we're, we're a little bit different than some of our peers here today. Uh, we're what's called a residential liberal arts college. And, and what that means from our perspective is that our focus is solely on undergraduate education. Our, our focus is on how do we give the students the resources they need to be successful in order for them to uh, not only have successful careers, but also live good lives. I, I think we ask our students to think of uh, the big questions. And we also hope they use their time here to think about what's next. What do they want to do with their lives? Uh, we are over um, 60 majors, over 70 minors. We have three undergraduate colleges, which is unusual for an institution of our size. College of Arts and Sciences comprises 60% of our students, uh, College of Management 20, and then the College of Engineering uh, is also limited to 20%. Uh, it's unusual to have engineering at a school of our size. It's also unusual to have engineering at a liberal arts institution. So I think it really changes our focus. It tends to be uh, much more student-centered, I'd say. Um, in terms of fit, I'm often asked, well, why would someone go all the way to central Pennsylvania to what I'm sure is a lovely little town to go to college? And I think because students are looking for an experience, they're looking for a certain kind of, especially with engineering, they're looking for a certain kind of experience. Uh, I would say the student who would fit best here was someone who not only wants an engaging education, who wants to work with professors, who wants to get to know classmates uh, as colleagues and not as competitors, but they also want to participate in a rich, robust uh, campus life. Over 90% of our students live on campus. We guarantee housing all four years. We have over 200 clubs and organizations. So I think someone who wants to live their entire life in a lab, sleep on a lab table, just eat, sleep, that's probably not a great fit for us because we want you to have the complete residential experience. We want our students to leverage every aspect here. I think if our professors were here today, especially the College of Engineering, they would really want me to highlight uh, a class called Engineering 100. So right away, you're, as a first semester student, uh, you're going to have a class in common with all 200 students in your entering engineering cohort. Uh, we want you to have a hands-on experience right away, not, not just to get a sense of what it is to do the work of engineering, the creativity, the time pressure, <laughs> the challenges, but also to build that sense of camaraderie, to build that sense of 
togetherness, to build that sense of community. Because regardless of the project, you're never going to have enough time to complete it. You're never going to have as big a budget as you want. So it's about coming together, figuring out what's the problem we're trying to solve, and then solving that problem. Every class at Bucknell is taught by a professor. There's no teaching assistants. So the professors, you know, they want to get to know the students. They insist on smaller classes. Our average class size is 20. So because professors teach classes, it makes it much easier for them to, uh, for the students to get to know professors, to get involved in research. Uh, and the professors here because they want to get involved in your lives. They want to be mentors. They take their work seriously. They want to get to know you. They're going to invest a lot of their time and their resources in your success. Um, now, something I always like to say uh, is, you know, regardless of what you major in, your major is not your career. And I think part of the experience of Bucknell is sort of figuring out, again, what do I want to do? Uh, we have a very large, very robust career services office, which helps out with things like externships, internships. We do job fairs, we do grad school fairs. When you enroll as a student, you have access to the Bucknell alumni database. So you can start, you can, you know, seek out over 50,000 living Bucknellians as, as mentors. You'll find pretty quickly when you wear a Bucknell sweatshirt out in the wild, uh, there's a lot of recognition there. Uh, and, and when you meet an alum, uh, it's an instant connection because the nature of the Bucknell experience, I think, is so unique. So we think a lot about, all right, what's, what's next, right? We think a lot about what's next, not just sort of the first job, but I think in, in terms of future jobs. So the resources our career services office offers you, they're not just available to you as a graduating senior. You can access their services for the rest of your life because, you know, life changes. And I think that's a good thing. Now, in terms of what we're looking for in the application, uh, it's a holistic process. It's just a fancy way of saying, we look at everything. Um, the question I hate the most in this process is what's the one thing I could do to stand out on my application? And, and unless you're able to put winner, you know, best supporting actor Academy Award, uh, you, you know, you want to look at everything. So we look at grades, we look at strength of schedule. Uh, we're actually test optional. This is our year, second year of being tested optional. That's for all majors, uh, even engineering applicants. So uh, but we're also looking at depth of activities. We're looking at the personal nature of your essay. We're looking at uh, the teacher letters, you know, everything that helps us get a sense of, is this going to be a place which you will thrive and are you someone that we can help reach their potential? So again, like I said, uh, totally biased, but I've been here a long time and I've seen some wonderful success stories and I hope you'll check us out. I hope you look at our website, contact you if you have any questions uh, and I hope you enjoy this process as much as it's possible to enjoy the college search process. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ben. Now we have Lafayette College coming up to close us out. Kathleen, go ahead, share your screen and take us away. Yes, I will do that, hopefully. Um, let's see, did I do it correctly? I'm always so challenged. So my yeah. name, I, all right, great. My name is Kathleen Williams. I am the Director of Admissions for the West Coast, and I'm the Liaison to Engineering at Lafayette. So Lafayette College is an engineering and liberal arts school located in Easton, Pennsylvania. Easton is a town of 30,000. It is literally just over the river you're looking at and uh, to New Jersey. Like our friends down in Bucknell, we are also division one. We play in the Patriot League along with Bucknell. So what you get at Lafayette in terms of engineering is a bit different from, from what you will get at a strictly engineering school. Uh, we are uh, uh, definitely a residential college. 96% of the students live on campus all four years. The teacher to or professor to student ratio is 10 to 1, and the average class size is 18.6. At Lafayette, it is very, very common for students to double major, major minor, or in some instances, graduate with both a BA and a BS. Uh, we do not admit by major, we admit by person. So quite literally, you could come to us undeclared and you could take introduction to engineering and find you have this passion for it. And we would say, welcome to engineering. We ask our engineers to declare their major by the end of their first year and everyone else to declare by the end of second year. So what is uh, being a STEM major like at Lafayette? 
Um, it's whatever you want it to be. Because we are um, a school that really encourages you to stretch outside of your academic wheelhouse, we will have students do things that they never imagined. And quite frankly, you do not have to give up your passions at Lafayette by being a STEM major. The director of the arts would tell you that some of her best musicians are in fact engineers. So what is STEM all about? You know, most people would say it's problem solving, it's building things, it's a designing technology. At Lafayette, we really believe that engineering and STEM is about making uh, this world better for others. I love this picture of these two little boys in the dugout, both equally engaged in their game. And they, they can both play because of engineers, right? Because of these prostheses that engineers made for them. Engineering at Lafayette takes a very humanistic approach. And by that, I mean, we really look at uh, decision-making and problem solving in, in with, to determine what kind of impact this will have on humanity. So in the 90s, for example, it was chemical engineers who had extra chemicals, so they tossed them in the river. Problem solved, uh, chemicals gone. Well, not so great for people down river. So at Lafayette, we really do look at that, um, that human aspect of um, what it's like to be an engineer. You know, you're going to have analytical skill sets as a STEM major, but at Lafayette, uh, we like to talk about the, the mindset of the innovator, creator, the risk taker, the collaborator, collaborator, and the communicator. The intersection of engineering and the liberal arts or STEM and the liberal arts means that when you graduate from Lafayette, you will have the soft skills that will take you from being a, an individual contributor to a manager, a leader, a business owner, an entrepreneur, a CEO. And that's because you will leave with the ability to read uh, and uh, read, write and analyze and also those soft skills of reading people. Um, Lafayette, is a place that um, has a lot of female engineers. So as an undergraduate institution, you will always be taught by faculty, never TAs, never grad students, because we simply do not have them. That means all the research opportunities are yours and yours alone. If you are a young woman seeking engineering, a sisterhood awaits you at Lafayette. We have um, one of the highest ranking, uh, we are one of the highest ranking schools with regard to having um, female faculty members as well. So organically about a third of our students are in engineering. Again, we don't admit by major or division and um, another 25% or so would be in the natural sciences. Uh, 20 to 25% of our graduates will go on to get their advanced degrees. 97% of our engineering um, graduates are employed uh, or in internships within 97, um, within six months of graduation. We, have, we place a number of folks um, in companies and then they become CEOs. And again, that's because of the soft skills that you're learning at a school that is both STEM strong and a liberal arts school. We've been doing engineering for over 150 years. So long before it was cool to be an engineer, we were doing it at Lafayette. Uh, and again, as the, as the um, statement up here says, we really do um, look at the whole person and in terms of our STEM approach, take that same approach of looking at um, the humanity behind what we do in um, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So Lafayette uh, does a holistic review of applications. We are a school that looks at demonstrated interests. So the fact that you're here tonight, fabulous. We highly encourage interviews. They are going on right now for those of you who are juniors. Our campus is open. You can come to us to see uh, the campus, have a personal tour. There are sessions online to speak with professors and students. Um, you know, one of the things that uh, that also uh, you need to know about um, engineering at Lafayette is you will have the ability to study abroad. So Lafayette will um, allow students to study the second semester of their sophomore year when we're not in a pandemic in either Bonn, Germany or Madrid, Spain. Wow, we have 100%, uh, we meet 100% of financial need and we have lots of merit scholarships. So I see that my time is up and Jay, it's back to you. Awesome, thanks so much, Kathleen. I'm actually now going to invite all of our presenters to come on up because I have a Q&A question that I would love to get your feedback on. So now that I've shared my screen here, we'll answer in the exact same way that you all presented. But 
What advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Embry Riddle, what do you have to say here? So one thing is I would just say, don't limit yourself. Um, When I was applying to college, I was a first generation student um, and my family uh, immigrated here from Haiti. And so everyone was like, oh, you know, you have to go to school like right, right at home. Like there's no way you're going to be able to go anywhere else. And I went 800 miles away from for college. I was there for six years and now look at me. So um, don't limit yourself. If there's a place or a school that you're interested in, you want to go to, um, let, let us tell you whether or not you can come. Don't decide that you can't come just because, just because other people are telling you that. Awesome. Fantastic. Florida Tech, what do you have to add here? Oh, thanks, Jay. Yeah, I would, uh, uh, Jay, you got my, uh, video frozen, by the way. Oh, I would, okay. uh, add that, hey, start the process early and, and, uh, um, communicate with us directly. You know, it's a lot harder in, in a COVID environment right now, but, uh, yeah, some schools are open, some are not, uh, and whatnot. So find out, but start asking questions and, and contact us directly. We love our offices, love it uh, when we're in communication with you, and we're happy to answer your, your questions. That's what our job is. Uh, so contact us as early as possible and start your research as early as possible. Thank you. Great, Georgia Tech. What do you have to say? Yeah, I would definitely say to really spend a lot of time thinking about who you are and who you might want to be. Some schools are really great for people who know exactly who they are right now and what they want to be. Some schools are great if you don't exactly know who you are yet or who you want to be. And I think it's a lot easier to find your right college fit if you take some time now to sit down and think a lot about who you are, because then as you start to apply to colleges, all you have to do to fill out a successful application is think then about who each of those colleges are. Um, And and when um, you've been really thoughtful about who you are and who the college is, you submit a really compelling application for the schools for whom you're a really good fit. So that would be my biggest piece of advice now. Awesome. Thank you. And Kevin with Drexel University, what do you have to say? Thanks, Jay. Sorry for the background change. Everybody had a little bit of an internet hiccup, but I am here now. Uh, The thing that I would recommend is to use all of the resources that universities provide to you. Uh, One silver lining of the pandemic has been that it's forced universities to provide so many more available resources to students on the internet, uh, which though that may not be exactly the same as shattering a student uh, class on campus or taking a campus tour, it is a really great resource to understand what a university is like from afar. And it's a great access point for our students from all across the country country and all across the world to understand what campuses are like. So really go into deep exploration of universities' websites. And like Mike said, ask admissions offices like and officers like us uh, what we recommend because we have really good uh, recommendations, even like a coffee shop on campus. We're here to help. Awesome. Thank you. Bucknell University. Yeah, I think the key thing to remember is the word process. It's, you know, this is something that's going to take a while. It's not something you figure out instantaneously, you know, you, you definitely want to do your homework. At the same time, I think Deco with what, what Sarah from Georgia Tech is saying, you know, you, you, it's, it is a wonderful existential experience. It is a wonderful way to learn a, a lot about yourself. Uh, and everyone's process is going to be different because every person is different. Uh, so I think it's important to sort of figure out what it is you're looking for. Uh, what do you really need to have? What would be nice to have? It's almost like buying a house. You have this sort of theoretical sense of what you want. And then you actually get out there and you know, some things you think are super important. You're like, oh, I don't need that. And other things you didn't know existed are suddenly like really important. Like if you're passionate for about skiing, you probably don't want to go to college in, in like, I don't know, South Texas or something. So, you know, it's your own process. It's not your parents' process. It's not your siblings' process. It's not your friend's process. It's your own process. And, and that's okay. It, this place is going to take you to some interesting places. You'll meet some interesting people. Um, you'll have some great experiences. And I think at the end of it, if you've done the process properly, you'll find an institution that not only meets your intellectual needs, but also uh, your emotional ones, because this process is both an intellectual and an emotional process. And it's important to think about both of those things going forward. Absolutely. Thank you. And let's close this question out with Lafayette College. 
Sure. So just remember that we all work for the Office of Admissions, not the Office of Denials. So we really are here to advocate for you and to be the voice of your applications. Do not be afraid to ask us questions. Um, we're happy to help. You know, if you can find it on our website without doing too much work, you probably want to do that first because all of us do get inundated. But here's the other thing to know. There are nearly 4,000 schools in this country, and um, we all have wonderful things to offer you, and you will bloom where you are planted. So um, we are here to help, and just you know, know that you will find your place. Beautiful. Thank you. Well, we're going to wrap it up here, and I just want to say thank you all, all of you who joined us live, all of you who are watching this recording later. Thank you so much to our six amazing panelists. You were awesome. Um, when you attendees close this window, there will be a link with a very short, quick survey. Um, it's just four questions that we've Stripe scanned. We'd love to have your feedback on. Also, this is just one of many sessions being hosted. We have another one happening later tonight, as well as if you'd like to learn more about any of these six schools, over the next couple of days here, we have longer information sessions that are being hosted by each individual school as well. So if something has piqued your interest or you need to get another question answered, feel free to join one of those sessions as well. And you can do that um, right at strivescan.com forward slash cache. And that is also where you'll find the recording for this session in about one week. All right now, y'all have a great evening and enjoy your night. Bye.